sine of phase shift zero is going to be right here. Sine of zero is zero. Okay, so this is going to go ahead and seriously simplify what's going on in this giant equation up here. Okay, so let's go ahead and substitute cosine zero equals one and sine zero equals zero. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify this equation right here. And we get something that looks like this, which can be further simplified to something that looks like this. Much simpler now, huh? Okay, so we're going to use kind of our uh, techniques we did before to describe this thing. This guy, that's a constant. This right here is a time varying waveform. We can go ahead and draw those guys where the constant looks like this. And where does it, uh, where, what's the value of it? It's VRMS, IRMS, and it stays that way the whole time. What does this guy look like? The time varying portion of it? Well, it's a minus, so we're going to put the minus right here for now, okay? So it's it's the this constant minus with the time varying waveform, which I'm going to describe right here. Okay, so it's a cosine. So cosine starts up here and it's going to go down through zero and back up through zero and this is going to be at twice the frequency of the voltage and current because we've got this two times two pi there okay so right here is a little bit of confusion here is this minus sign um what we can do is distribute that minus sign right there, you know, because basically taking this constant and subtracting this time varying waveform might be slightly confusing. So let's go ahead and take this negative and add it to this time varying waveform. And what you're going to get for the time varying waveform, all it's going to do, it's going to look like this. Starts negative, goes through zero, goes positive. So I'm sorry, guys, I didn't uh, do the full, uh, just notice that. That should be right there. That's the full. So this right here is the half a cycle, excuse me, a full cycle. That's the, sec the second cycle. Same here. So now we've taken this thing and taken a, a negative times it, and what we get is a waveform that looks like this, where this is the period. So it's gone through two cycles. Okay, now, since we've taken that negative through there, we've just basically, now we can add the constant waveform plus this, where there's a maximum of VRMS, IRMS, a minimum of VRMS, negative VRMS, IRMS. This remember right is VRMS, IRMS also. So what does this look like? Okay, at zero, it's going to be negative VRMS, IRMS, when this one is at VRMS, IRMS. So at zero, a quantity minus the same quantity, that's zero. When does that also ha when does that happen? It also happens right there. So that's going to be zero. It also happens right here. So that's going to be a zero. And then what we're going to do is basically it's going to reach its maximum right here, our maximum right there, because we're at VRMS right there, and then we're adding another VRMS to it. Then we're going to be VRMS there. We're going to be adding another to it. So what we're going to get is something that looks like this, very similar to what we drew right there. So this mathematics is confirming our suspicions of what's going on in a resistive circuit, where we're getting something above the axis. It's always positive. It's centered about an average. There's a maximum, power maximum, 
and there's a power minimum of zero. And again, it's twice the frequency, half the period. Okay? So, uh, again, it's not below the axis. It's not below. This is negative power. Negative power is when power is returned to the source. This is positive power. So let's go ahead and draw our where our current would be. Ordinarily, our current would be going like this. It's going through one cycle. And then our voltage right here. That's also going through one cycle. And that's period T1. Excuse me, that's... And what is the period of our power? Well, it's the half half the period there. It's T2, okay? So it's twice the frequency, half the period. All right, so let's go ahead and draw our, form, uh, draw our formula out again. And here's our general formula right here. And what I want to talk about this here is just a little trick here. Okay, remember, I certainly hope you do, VRMS is equal to V maximum divided by square root 2, where V maximum is the maximum that the square uh, that the sine wave will get to. So up there, that's Vm, Vrms right there, okay, where it's the, the DC equivalent that would deliver the same amount of power. So knowing that, Irms is also equal to Im divided by square root 2. But now look at this VRMS IRMS term right here. So VRMS IRMS minus VRMS IRMS cosine 2 times 2 pi F of t. Substitute these guys into this equation. What you get is VM IM square root 2 square root 2 minus vm im square root 2 square root 2 times our time varying waveform at twice the frequency what is square root 2 times square root 2 it's 2 so vm im divided by 2 minus vm im divided by 2 cosine 2 times 2 pi f of t. Okay, so what is the average power? Well, average power is right there. So average power, p average, is equal to vm im divided by 2 on the graph. If that's our 0, and that's our time varying waveform. I'm going to draw a current in the background, as well as voltage. And remember, current and voltage are going through one cycle. Power is going through two cycles. So where is our average? Right there. It's Vm, Im, divided by 2. What is it? What is our maximum power? It's Vm Im. Okay? So centered around the average, there's a maximum. It's regions of no power. It's twice the frequency. And when does it reach its maximum? Right here. When voltage is at its maximum and current's at its maximum. Same thing right here, where it's negative maximum, negative maximum, simultaneous. They're in phase. Voltage and current are in phase in a resistive circuit. Positive power. Okay? So we are going to move on to how this looks like for inductive and capacitive circuits.